guess we're talking to at the moment. Guess who's getting his hands wrapped? <laughs> the lion himself. Lions on the go. Lions! <laughs> so how are we doing, Anthony? Yeah, we're good, man. How are you? I'm great. Welcome to BWTO Sports, finally. Finally, finally. It's taken our time, but we got there. Everything's timing. Everything is timing. I hear it, I believe it. See it, believe it, become it, right? Dream it, believe it, become it. Okay, I'll take that as well. <laughs> so, so, as it's the first time we're speaking to you, we want to know a little bit more about the journey, how you got here, how you got to this point of being uh, you know, a professional boxer and arguably the most talked about boxer in the UK. Um, it just literally just happened. Um, I got into boxing very late. Um, I started doing the training for that like, proper boxing at, at, at the age of 18. I got to 19, um, just before my 20th birthday I had my first fight and then it just went from there I had 12 amateur fights, um, 11 knockouts in the amateurs and um, I started professional in 2015 and um, yeah now I'm 16 and 0, 15 knockouts, it's going good. We've we been watching, we've been watching. <laughs> so you're not doing too bad for yourself at the moment? I'm doing well, yeah. I really want to talk a lot more about your amateur career, people focus on your professional career but I'm interested in those the early years of Anthony Yard. So you turned pro, before you turned pro, I know I had a long conversation with Tunde about how you met Tunde. Tunde said, go away and do something and come back. When you went away and Tunde sent you away to go and do something, what went through your mind for the whole rejection process? Um, it wasn't really a rejection progress, it, process. It was more, um, I was still training here. Right. But it was the fact of I wanted attention in terms of like, I wanted more pad work. I wanted like one-to-one -one training. Yep. And um, at the time, Tunde was just saying he's only focusing on um, Otu, because Otu was turning professional, and which is understandable. I was, he asked me what, what I'm doing right now, and I said I'm doing the amateurs. And he said well, I'm not training um, any amateur fighters. So um, what I would suggest you do is, you know, a lot of people come and say they want to train or whatever, and then two months later, they leave, and then I've wasted two months of my life. I said, yeah, that's understandable. So he goes, um, whatever you want as an amateur. And I said, nothing. This is when I was like six, seven fights in. And he goes, well, at least you can win something. And then um, I'll think about like, giving you that one-to-one. -one. I know them, them kind of things. So um, literally, it wasn't a thing where like, I went away. And um, I wasn't here with I was still coming here every day. Right. Um, but in terms of getting the attention that I wanted, yep. um, I brought back a medal. I think I've done, I've done the box cut. I brought back the trophy. I said, yeah, I'll not to everyone in the competition. So he was like, okay. And then again, it was the same thing. Um, I was getting pad work, doing pad work, but it wasn't the same, like one to one. Level. But as I said, I'm consistent. And I'm a person that I'm going to keep working hard. And um, yeah, eventually, you know, um, we ended up doing like, a lot of work together. We went to um, Vegas. We actually went to Vegas before I'd done the box cut. Okay. Yeah, so literally, I came back after Vegas and then yeah, I won the box cut in 2012. Right. Okay, so let me find a bit more about you in terms of where you hail from. I hear some story, people say Leighton, some people say Forest Gate. You ask where Lennox Lewis comes from, some say he was in Forest Gate. <laughs> no, nah, he was in Stratford. No, 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 he was in East Ham. No, he's West Ham. So where exactly are you from? East London. That's, that's, where, that's where it all comes from because um, I've always just been from London. I'm a London boy. Yep. Um, at heart, East London. But um, in terms of living, yep. um, I was born in Hackney. Like me. Like <laughs> Hackney. 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 <laughs> um, and then when I was around, I was very young when I moved to Stratford. Okay. Again, but I was, I was still very close to Hackney. Yeah. Um, Hackney Market was literally two minutes away from my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the market. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I lived in Stratford, basically, um, Kennard Road. Right. Cop into the state. Right. And then um, I spent most of my. Um, my growing days, yeah. Teenage years, I spent in Forest Gate. I'm, I'm a Forest Gate man. My dad still lives in Forest Gate. See what I'm saying? What, what part of Forest, Forest Gate? Forest Dean Street. Oh, I was on Catherine Road. <laughs> <laughs> of Green Street? Yeah, Catherine Road. Okay. okay. So, uh, what school did you go to? Forest Gate. Forest Gate School. I went to the Ventures. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Even my mum went Forest Gate. Oh my good lord. It's in the bloodline. Oh my lord. <laughs> and what, did you go Forest Gate when it got redone over? Or was it Forest Gate when it was bad Forest Gate and nobody wanted to go to that school? It's, it was, it, for me, when I went there, it was bad Forest Gate. 
<laughs> my, my, my year, my year was so bad, yeah. Yeah. They brought out contracts for, <laughs> to try and control the students. And they sent I out, remember you that. Yeah, they sent out um, letters to everyone's parents saying, yeah. we want you to sign this, so if your child continues, we have permission to ban you, like, permanently exclude your child. Wow. My mum never signed nothing. She said, that's a trick. So I stayed in school and finished my education, but a lot of my friends got picked up. Yeah. During the GCSE. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my, my year was very, very bad, man. Imagine. I think the world, the world went to Forest Gate School, the footballer. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they were good friends as Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good friend of mine as yeah. well. Wow. Okay. I remember with the backflips. There you go. There you go. So, okay, so now you become a professional fighter. From from when you started to where you are, now what's the biggest lesson you've learned so far as a professional fighter? Um, just as, to stay focused and be true to yourself. Um, the biggest lesson I've learned is literally focus on yourself and what you're doing. Because what happens is a lot of people fail because they listen to um, outside opinions that don't matter. So um, recently, um, there was a boxing show, and um, surprisingly, it's like now a lot of people are talking about boxing experience. And um, Nigel, Nigel Ben, his son fought this Saturday, had a tough fight, and Nigel Ben said on camera, you know, my son only had 12, um, 20 amateur fights. Um, and then he went on to talk about how important experience is. Um, I've been saying this from the beginning, you know, I'm looking good in my fights, professional fights. Um, at the stage I'm at right now, on paper, I shouldn't be at that stage yet. Um, I had 12 amateur fights and I'm still learning on the job. So that's what a lot of people don't understand about boxing. It's, mm. a, very, it's, it's a lot of experience. Now, the Benu sort of mentioned, on average, people usually have over 100 um, amateur fights. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are Olympians, yep. etc. So, as a professional, I started boxing late. I'm gaining most of my experience in a professional boxing mm -hmm. under the under the spotlight. Um, are we well aware? We well aware. Me and Tunde have so, gone no, hours about it. Some so, people are well aware. And then again, a lot of people give you stick saying, because you look good, they say, oh, you should be fighting this person, you're fighting that person. Mm. But then at the same time, they need to understand that boxing is not a 100 minute sprint. They don't care about you. They, yeah, want yeah. you to, they want you to fight Kovalev this week, <laughs> next week Bivol, Stevenson. Because then, it's entertainment. But it's, I, I then, believe that entertainment <laughs> comes with time. Of course and, and not only that as well, um, I'm a strong believer of everything's time. And when the time's right, you make the right fight, the right fight happen. How do you feel when your British rivals call you out and say, Buglioni and a few others? How do you respond to that? And is there a case of you wanting to go out there and prove a point and you train and say, well, no, not yet? Or is it a case of you understand the whole timing is everything? I just understand boxing. Right. Um, a lot of people do it strategically. Right. So um, with Buglioni, when he was calling me out, or not even calling me out, when he was mentioning my name, he had no intentions of fighting. But right. we offered him the fight. Um, he got offered more money than I, I've ever heard of for yeah. a British title fight, or whatever you want to call it. And he turned it down. Um, he ended up he ended up getting knocked out, um, which was a waste. But um, he had no intention of fighting. But what people do, um, this time I've learned as well, they call out your name, so their name's affiliated with your name. So whatever you do, they put your, like you, you just mentioned his name. Yep. Um, that's, what, that's what a lot of boxers do. They mention someone's name. A lot of people, when Fred Mayer was doing his thing, everyone was calling Fred Mayer's name. So anyone that was doing relatively well, the next um, interview you saw, the headline was, this person calls out Fred Mayer. So Fred Mayer's name is put in YouTube, their name comes up. It's all um, strategy for me. And, um, but at the same time, again, I'll focus on myself. <laughs> I'll fight anyone. Now, I want to hold that statement right there. If a man calls you out in the street, you respond differently, right? There's a way you handle the situation, right? How do you channel that inner man, that, that man from Hackney? How do you channel that from being called out and keeping the ego in check? I say, well, I've got to thump up that boy. What's he talking to me for? Like that. How do you channel that and say, all right, in time, I'm going to give you some licks. Well, not just yet. Hold it. Hold on. For me, it's experience. And, um not having a new head. Um, just like what you said, you, know, you could be in, you could, as you said, the street. The street and boxing is a lot different, but you could be in the street and the guy is calling you out um, while police are there. You know, he's saying, now come, let's fight, and police are standing there. 
So you really don't want to fight. You know the fight's never going to happen, but he's just talking. Yeah. And then there's someone now, you're in an alleyway, it's just you and him, and he's saying, come, let's fight. Yeah. Complete different story. So that's, a, that's exactly what boxing likes sometimes. People call your name, they have no intention to fight you. Okay? So again, I'm one of the people that I can look at a situation and say, you're a joker. Okay. You don't really want to fight. When you look at how you've risen, and, and really risen to a point where I can't remember a boxer being on both Sky <laughs> and on Box Nation in an advertisement. <laughs> like, I haven't seen that yet. When you see things like that, advertisement and people giving you plaudits, what does that do for you? Does that make you real, realize you've got to train harder? Does it make Anthony Yard feel, yeah, about time? Or where is it for Anthony Yard? I'm, I'm, I'm always, in my mind, I'm always saying I need to progress. I've said this, if you watch all my interviews, that's what I've been saying from the beginning. I need to progress, I need to keep getting better, stay focused, keep working hard because, as I said before, um, in my mind still, but, um, I'm behind. So I'm always going to be like that. I'm always going to say I can do better. Each fight I have, I say ah, I could have done that better. Right. Um, I could have knocked him out this way. I could have knocked him out that way. Yeah. This could have been better. That could have been better. Um, crit critique. I, I criticize myself a lot, but I always want to progress. Mm -hmm. And um, I think complacency is a disease mm -hmm. that, that lives in a lot of people. And when you get complacent, um, that's when you start to see a lot of people start to decrease. So I'm always one of the people I'm trying to build progression. The sec five, I commentated live in the last fight you had. Okay. Commentated live in it. And I'm watching and I'm thinking, you know what, this boy could take this guy out anytime he wants to. He can take him out anytime. He's taking, I'm watching it round by round. Alright, okay, he's looking at him. Look at him. He's looking at him. Right, now, no, okay. This is going too long now because he can take him out anytime he wants to. I said, right, Tim, they must say something to him. Step on the gas. The next run, you step on the gas and you stop him and yourself. See, told you. So, when you're in the process in the ring like that, and you're saying you're learning or you're progressing or you're behind, what goes through the mind when you've got a fight, you're thinking, well, from round one or from round two, I've got this guy. What is the motivation for you to drag that out five, six rounds when you could stop him in two or three rounds? What do you gain from that five or six rounds of cat and mouse? You know what? In one thing I've learned in boxing, this is even just from watching boxing, it may appear that I could knock him out straight away. If it was that easy, a lot of boxers, you know, you hear guys in the pub, knock him out, <laughs> ah, finish him. If it was that easy, I would have went in there and knocked him out. But again, the art of boxing is to hit and not get hit. I'm not gonna go in there um, and just put my hand, my head down and start swinging. Or just, you know, cut, cut, cut and start, and start blowing him. I'm not learning that way. I know I can back. I probably could have just put my head down, got my head in his chest and started ripping. But at the same time, I don't think I'm learning like that. I'm not tactically breaking someone down, landing the shot I want to land when I land it. Um, I believe, I've, again, I've progressed to where I've got to so far by strategically breaking down my opponent. Um, even the facts where you have seen me catch someone with a good shot and knock them out, I've caught them with a shot I wanted to catch someone. Not a thing where I've just thrown an eight punch combination randomly and then caught my opponent. Look, I saw that set fight where you hurt the guy and I could yeah. see you had him there to take him out and to me from the outside it looked like cat and mouse to me yeah. it looked like you had the guy to be taken out two three rounds earlier yeah as I said from the outside it may appear sometimes it appears away but I'm not gonna yeah I'm but you but at that point you weren't actually you didn't put your foot, you weren't putting your foot down actually you actually put your foot down you stopped the guy so actually what I'm saying is I don't know maybe I've got a point maybe I haven't no no you, you may have a point but the way I always see it is in the ring is sometimes you may you may be able to put your foot down on the gas, yep. but everything, for me, everything's time. Time and inches in boxing is very okay. important. Let me wrap this up. I want to know inside the mind of, of, of Anthony Young. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> well, I'm going to try. And if I'm on your case, I'm going to try hard. Yeah. Okay, now, super fights. Let's forget about average fights. Super fights. Yeah. Not Frank Brooklyn or anything like that. Super fights. Give me three super fights that you would have or would like to see yourself in in the future version of yourself the best possible Anthony Yard three single fights uh, uh, pay attention to what I say and how I say this year I am very careful three super fights for me yes me headlining a massive pay-per-view fight in England at okay. the stadium me headlining a massive pay-per-view fight possibly in America 
me headlining a massive super fight in another country probably has never been done before, making history. I never mention anyone's name other than myself because within the future, you don't know who's going to be there. And that's one thing you um, realise in boxing. I'm not in control of anyone else's destiny. Um, I'm not in control of how hard anyone else works or how they do in their fights. So again, I'm not going to put anyone else's name in my future. I don't know what they're doing. I'm confident in myself. I can't say I'm confident in anyone else. And that's the reason I'm confident in myself is because I know how hard I train. Um, I feel like whatever's going to happen is going to happen anyway. And um, I've got my vision of where I want to be. So um, I can't really talk to anyone else of where they're going to be in the future or whatever. That's why you ever heard me call out no one's name. You ever heard me call out your name because I know where I'm going. So that's why sometimes you have to put in that mind or whatever. If you're as confident as I am, then when you get there, we're going to have a massive fight. Congratulations on being ranked number one now. Thank you. How does that make you feel? Um, proud, but at the same time, again, I'm still grounded. To me, that don't mean nothing. Because I still haven't, um, I haven't got my hands on the world title yet. I haven't defended that world title yet. I'm not where I want to be yet, not even in the slightest. So again, I'm still grounded. To me, it's like, from when I turned professional, I was getting certain media attention. Yep. And people were saying good things about me. I don't, it don't mean nothing. Because you see it time and time again throughout history, people talk about people and then they let that get to their heads. And then, do you understand the frustration though? But people, for, for fans, for fans that see you and see you're so talented and all this, they want to know what kind of a lion you are. Of course they, they want to know if you're a lion that's got teeth or you're a lion with no teeth. That's you what they want to know. You will see how, you will see how big and sharp my molars are at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Yard, thank you so much. Love, love.